Hi everyone, it's Derek here from my DMED. Welcome to today's video where I'm going to take you through a case study on hematuria. So there's a few things that you need to know about this presentation. Firstly, you need to know your two great referral guidance surrounding both the presentation of visible and non-visible hematuria. Second, you also need to know about some of the investigations that are available to us in primary care. So I'll go through all of this in today's case study. I've also attached a link to our theory video based on hematuria, which has got all the knowledge you need to know and all the information to get through today's case study video. So don't forget to pause just before the end of each question. You can write your answer down and click continue when you're ready to move on. So with that said, let's dive straight in. Mary is an 80 year old female with a background of COPD and angina. She was seen last week by herself following an episode of visible hematuria. You send off a urine culture and also arrange some bloods and then you decide to follow her up in two weeks time. The urine culture shows no signs of an infection and the bloods you arranged showed a new onset of thrombocytosis and also erased blood glucose. She presents to you at the follow up appointment still with ongoing symptoms of hematuria. So, question one, what is the most appropriate action? So under current guidance, our patients are over the age of 45 who present with visible hematuria that's unexplained or visible hematuria that persists after treatment of a UTI. These patients will need to be referred under two week wait guidance to urology. So this particular patient will need a two week wait referral. Moving on to our next question, question two. You now see her again following investigations under the urology clinic. They haven't found any reasons for her symptoms. She still has ongoing intermittent hematuria. So in this case, what would you do next? The answer here is to arrange a transvaginal ultrasound scan. So if no cause for her symptoms are found by urology, Current guidance advises a transvaginal ultrasound scan in women aged more than 55 with visible hematuria with any of the following. So we can think about thrombocytosis, anemia, high blood glucose, and an abnormal vaginal discharge. Our patient here has two features from this list. So looking at our last question, question three, what if Mary presented with persistent, significant non-visible hematuria rather than visible hematuria? Which one of the following features, if present, will mean a too quick referral to rule out bladder cancer as a cause? An EGFR of 45, an ACR of 29, a raised white cell count, an elevated ferritin, and increased urinary frequency. The answer to this question is a raised white cell count. Now, current NICE guidance suggests that if a patient is 60 years old or older with non-visible hematuria and either has dysuria or a raised white cell count, they will need a referral under two week wait. So that brings us to the end of today's video. As always, if you found it helpful, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe. I've also attached a link to our URG playlist in case you want to build up a little bit more knowledge and skill within this topic area. Until the next time, I'll see you soon.